What is up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Charm City, or I'm sorry, not Charms. I'm Charm City Graft. Uh, but yeah, brand new episode of that hobby show. And with us today, uh, Houston is with his family. So I have Mike from Yaku TV English on YouTube. And you'll see here uh, on his screen, he has Zen Market because today's episode is how to buy Japanese baseball cards when you are living in America. Uh, Cause I know there are a ton of people that are interested in a Japanese baseball, B Japanese baseball cards, but they don't know where to get them. So that's where Mike comes in. So how, how are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. Good. You'll get the chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Dan uh, was able to make it. Uh, we, we moved up the episode a little bit early. Uh, so Dan could check in. And then we have uh, Rob as well from uh, Prestige Collectibles. I just bought a, uh, a nice little stack of uh, foreign Japanese cards from him, foreign players, which is American, because I do a lot of TTM autographs. And usually once you, uh, you send uh, some American guys, you know, their Japanese cards, usually you end up getting a response. So I, I try to use that to my advantage. But uh, yeah, so Mike, uh, I like a good origin story. So how did you get interested in A, Japanese baseball and B, Japanese baseball cards? So in 2018, I was getting back into card collecting. 24 now, so I was like 21, 22. And 2018 is a good year to get back into it, considering, you know, Otani, Acuna and everything. So I'm stacked up on all those guys as rookies, thank God. <laughs> And um, I'd been studying Japanese for about two years, and I'd made pen pals to study with, and my dad was, we would send snack packs back and forth, like, I send them Funyuns, they send me, you know, Calbee potato chips, stuff like that. Yeah, so did you so, actually get the potato chips with the baseball cards? I would get that later, but um, my dad was like, you know, ask if they had baseball cards, and I didn't know at the time if they uh -huh. did or not. So my friend... They had no idea, so they go looking. They they can't figure anything out, which I'm kind of surprised now, knowing how big it is in Japan. Yeah, yeah. And um, they managed to actually get me some packs, and they sent them for my dad. And my dad ended up pulling a facsimile autograph of Vladimir Ballantine. Oh, nice. And me being me at the time, I'm like, oh, look, you got a real autograph. Because <laughs> I remember opening packs with him as a kid and like looking for the autograph. And he tells me it's a facsimile, and I'm like, what do you mean? It's a, like, why would they do that? Well, that's that's stupid. Why is it numbered out of a hundred then? Yeah. And I ended up finding, you know, a uh, Japanese baseball card, Japanese baseball card block spot. Uh, there you go. I, for love of me, I, I talk to him all the time. I can't remember his name now. Oh, Dave. Yeah, Dave. Yeah, Dave McNeely. And Good dude. I just browsed his website, sort of like how you did with Dan's website. And then I was on eBay, and I saw a lot of five BBM boxes. From mm. like 05 to like 07 or in, in 08, and I for like 100 bucks, so I bought them. And that's pretty much just how I got into it. And I became a Chibalote fan because my friend, since she couldn't find me baseball cards, she sent me a mag. Oh, well, she found them later, but she sent a magazine of like the Chibalote yearbook. Okay. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to get into this now. Chibalote is my boys. Let's go. <laughs> I actually like their uniforms. They're pretty cool. I uh, I, I dig the pinstripes. Uh, I, I dig foreign pinstripes. Not you know the Yankees can't stand them, but yeah, Chiba. Their their uniforms look pretty. Uh, There's pretty actually cool. a Japanese rap song about the pinstripes. Oh really? Which they filmed it in the stadium, and I'm just like, really, guys, you're rapping about pinstripes? Nice, nice. Like you. Oh, uh, Dan had a question for you, uh, and I think you can see it on chat, Mike. Yeah, I got but, it on the uh, sidebar. I'll, I'll bring it up so everybody else can see it. Um, I don't have my bachelor's. I'm working on that. If I mm -hmm. decide to go to university, I can attend my two years in Japan, so I might do that. But without a bachelor's, I'm sure most people are where you have to figure out a way to get someone you know, to hire you. Yeah. Because yeah. getting trying to go overseas on an associates is like pretty difficult. Yeah. So would you be trying to be a ESL teacher? I'd probably start out doing that and just try to you know do whatever I could. Gotcha. Gotcha. I'm hoping okay. this you know PLTV thing works out in a 
up the stars align and I can do something there. Yeah, and uh, it's it's pretty cool that you mentioned the uh, PLTV because uh, you've actually been working on that. Uh, and I don't know. I, I think the videos are pretty awesome, and uh, it, it's a good way to uh, – for for people that may not have, I believe the Pacific League has a subscription service. Uh, so if folks aren't aware of that, or like maybe they don't have a uh, VPN or anything like, I'm I'm not sure uh, if you would need something like that. But, you don't uh, need it, but the whole website's in Japanese, so you'd have to sign up. You know, using the Google Translated website. Gotcha. Which can get pretty goofy when you see the translations. Okay. Gotcha. So let me uh, bring up the uh, Pacific League TV YouTube channel for everyone so they can check it out. And so this is what it will. There we go. So this is what it'll look like when you uh, just go ahead, type in Pacific League TV, and you can see all the top 20 play videos, uh, plays of the week, uh, the quirky moments, game highlights prospects, all kinds of uh, great information, and it's in English, and uh, yeah, it's, it's a pretty cool channel to uh, check out, so, and that, it's a good way to get your feet wet um, into Japanese baseball, so, but uh, the title of this episode, How to Buy Japanese Baseball Cards, and on your screen, you have Zen Market, so can you explain to our viewers uh, that may not know what Zen Market is? So Zen Market, along with other sites like Baiyi and Joss and everything, they let you just buy stuff from Japan and not get it shipped to you immediately. Mm -hmm. It gets shipped to um, you know a warehouse, and you have your own little box, and then you get a bunch of orders, and then you just ship it over here in one fee, and you pay a couple of other like small fees, and then you just get it here. There's a lot of stuff that you like you can't buy from Yahoo Auctions in America. You got to go through. Zen market and buy ye and all that. Yeah. So I use this and I can actually find a lot of stuff through here. You can type in English and it'll kind of auto translate it. Okay. I do recommend opening up Google translate and, you know, typing in whatever you want to type in and searching that way. And of yeah. course you don't have to do Yahoo auctions. You can do Rakuten, Japanese, Amazon, pretty much anything. Nice. So my only, uh, experience with it i i use jaws and uh the fees for me added up uh pretty fast because i i think it's like each um each auction you end up paying like maybe what is it like 30 yen or something on top of the uh card and it can add up fast so what i had to do was trying try and find uh, a buyer that was or a seller that was selling a lot of the items that I wanted so I could combine the fees because I don't know how it is with Zen Market, but with Joss, I was able to email them and say, Hey, uh, this is the person that I'm that I'm bidding on some items from. They end within the next few days. Can you hold off on the fees and combine them for me instead of, uh, you know, just a, a fee here, a fee there, you know? Uh, Cause yeah, it, it definitely added up fast. Zen market, unfortunately will not do that. I've tried. No. <laughs> um, so that's why I don't bid on any singles unless it's like a, you know, a high quality autograph or a relic yeah. card I want. I know Dan said about buy -E, there's a thing you can get like a Chrome extension where you can add 50 cards to one transaction for one fee. Oh, wow. And I think that's how he's been buying a lot of his singles, like uh -huh. your regular, you know, 10 cent cards. Yeah. For a parallel and an autograph and stuff like that. I mean, I'm sure most people are just going to want to pay the fee if it's, you know, a high quality thing like that. Yeah. One of the Zen market has a 300 yen fee and not they have a uh, yen, not 30 yen. Yeah. It's free item consolidation. I know with other ones, you have to pay a fee to consolidate the one package. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Zen market's all just, you just hit the combine button and you're good to go. Oh, nice. So one of the th one of the problems that I ran into though was the American players their names aren't always spelled the same uh, in Japan like on, on the card it 
it'll be uh, spelled differently, or they'll just go by one name. And one of the things I ran into was I would need to go to, I would try to find the player's Wikipedia page for when he played in Japan and copy and paste the, the text of his, uh, his name in Japanese into the search engine. Uh, have, have you ran into any type of problems like that? Yeah, I've ran into a couple of issues, especially when you're translating yourself like I do sometimes. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, Charlie Manuel. The way it translates on Google Translate is not the way it actually is in Japanese. Like, they have it as manieru. Mm -hmm. Apparently, it's manna eru. So, it's like something different like that. I might be wrong on that. Yeah. So, I have to, like, go to his Japanese Wikipedia page to get the correct spelling. Gotcha. And then a couple of players, like, even on the cards, I have a, a TTM card from Adam Riggs. Okay. It's spelled Adam Rigu. Oh. <laughs> In English, they put, they put Adam Rigu, and I'm like, okay, someone screwed up there. Yeah, like, and then there's, uh, like I said, there's some guys that just, uh, who was it? Uh, Brandon Mann. His cards just said Brandon. And then yeah. I had to do a little detective work where luckily it had his birth date. So I found all the Brandons that played in Japan and then tried to match up the birth date. And that's how I figured out who it was. Yeah. There's a lot of investigation work you got to do when you're collecting foreign cards. Yeah. And that's kind of what makes it fun though. That's uh, I, I enjoy that because uh, you end up finding out uh, through the investigation that, Hey, you actually, I actually had American cards of this guy's or of this guy. And so now I have other cards, you know, that I can try to send them TTM. So, or you find out that they're still playing in the States. Yeah, I believe there was, um, it was, I have a TTM card. It's Ryan Glenn. He does not have a baseball reference page, I think, or even really? a Wikipedia page or even an MILB page. <laughs> and he has a single like Rocketon card. Uh huh. But he played in CPBL, so I had to go track him down. I found out he's selling real estate. Oh, nice. Somewhere in Texas, so I had to like send it to his office. And I asked him to inscribe like CPBL champ. Uh huh. Which he did, which is pretty funny because it's on an MPB card. Oh, that's pretty cool. I like like so many of those like people like that. Like, um, I think Tyrone Woods isn't even on SportsCollectors.net. Really? I had to sign to send to him, and I had to go through Florida voting records or something like registered political party addresses to find him. Oh, like, awesome. He never sent my card back. I'm sure he's just like, what kind of psycho just did this? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, there, there's a lot of the Japanese or well, I can't say Japanese, but, uh, uh, American players that played in Japan that, uh, really don't like the sign, uh, at all, which is, it, it kind of surprises me uh, because a lot of times those guys, that's where they achieve the most success uh, in their playing career. And uh, yeah, just some of them don't want anything to do with it, but other guys kind of love it. So can you give us a, like a run through with the Zim market? All right. So one cool feature I'll point out in case anyone's noticing is that I actually have negative, negative balance. You okay. can see that up there. So if you're a frequent customer to Zen Market, uh, you can actually get a credit. Um, it's not showing up now. Of course, I can't. I don't know what to do. But they can actually forward you fifty, uh, fifty, uh, fifty dollars to play with in credit. Oh wow! And they can actually give you up to five hundred dollars in credit if you're uh -huh. a frequent customer. So since I've had four packages this year, I have fifty dollars to play with. If I get one more package they'll give me a $200 to play with. Oh, wow. No credit check. Just you have to pay it back to get your packages. So if you're spending it, you know, they know you're it's either you're losing your stuff or you're paying it back. It's one or the other. Gotcha. Um, so, you know, here's my account. You have a watch list like any other, any other thing, mm -hmm. uh, payment methods. Uh, we can go look at my past parcels. Here's your messages where you, you know, if they have a question for you, if you're trying to get an item unblocked, because a lot of items will get automatically blocked. There we go. For, like, the, there was an insert set called Flamethrowers. Okay. The actual, like, website automatically picked up on the word Flamethrower, and they're like, yeah, you can't get this. 
<laughs> so I had to go manually message them saying, please, uh, you know, it's just a trading card. It's not a flamethrower. Yeah, yeah. Uh, d- 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 if we were able to go look at my past parcels, we can... You can... Re- uh, that's my tracking. You can request pictures of, like, your items. Oh, really? Nice. Yeah, so I got one old magazine, and I got one... I got three boxes. So okay. this is already shipped to me, but if I had wanted to, I could say, hey, you know, take a picture of it for me. Of course, the pictures are fine, probably gone now. So uh, you're ordering something condition-sensitive. It's probably a good idea to pay the 200 yen fee to get, you know... Yeah, picture yeah. for it. Yeah, because my, uh, my package from Joss, it was... Uh, uh, the packaging was creative. I'll, I'll say <laughs> that. Uh, it was... Uh, I think I got like a stack of Calby cards and they're, they're tiny. And the good thing is the, the corners I believe on Calby are rounded. And, uh, but yeah, they came in a little Mickey mouse Ziploc bag. Really? Uh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, then, Zen market's really good with packaging. They really like their bubble wrap. Oh really? Yeah. No, which bubble is wrap. really, really annoying in all honesty, but your stuff's yeah. going to get there in one piece. Um, so that's really the rundown of everything. Like it's pretty straightforward. Uh-huh. Uh huh. We do a search. Let's just type in the word. Yeah. There BBM we on Yahoo auctions. You know, like say, oh, I don't want to see this. Down in uh, United States dollars. Oh uh, yeah, uh, that's that's really good too. And let's say I don't want to see this. You know, I don't. I'm not spending two hundred three dollars, and I'm not going to get into bidding war. Hmm. Buyout price, uh, minimum buyout five dollars, max fifty dollars. Apply, which is something I wish eBay did. You know, like I don't think eBay lets you sort by dollar amount, or maybe they might. Uh, yeah, I I don't play around on eBay too much, and what, and if I do, it's on my phone. So I I think mm-hmm. the mobile features are a little bit uh less than uh you know the uh desktop or fortunately for some reason when you use the words beat the phrase bbm you get a lot of car parts okay i don't so that's always one thing to be aware about so that that one photo up at the top looks like one of the sellers i've bought from before with the green background and the uh kind of like the checkerboard uh i I definitely remember that oh this dude yeah Oh, uh, yeah. I might recognize his name because it actually looks familiar to me. T- yeah, I've bought from him before, I think. Yeah, yeah, I, I know that background. Because some of them, you know, they, uh, it's their, uh, looks like their tablecloth almost, and mm-hmm. they have pretty distinguishable tablecloths. So, one yeah. thing I'd say to be wary of if you're buying from here is that the Japanese really love their rubber bands. Oh, yeah. So I, if I, you're, that happened, yeah. If you're buying a lot of cards, honestly, unless it's, you know, from a, place a uh, uh, seller you've bought from before mm-hmm. expect your packs like loose packs expect them to, expect them to be rubber banded gotcha uh of course you can go to rocketin and you can get good deals that way yeah i used to use them for my boxes but they got rid of uh i think it was called like the global market because mm-hmm. there was this one store that i would always go through and then, uh, for some reason, yeah, they ended it. Uh, you can use uh, Mercury or Mercari. I forget how it is. M-E-R-C-A-R-I. You can yeah. use the Japanese version of that. And another cool thing is that if there's something on another website that are not supported, uh-huh. say uh, Mint, you know, the, uh, the main hobby shop of Japan. Yep. Just right here, Pro Baseball. Uh, you can just click on whatever you want and you take the URL, drag and drop it, or just copy paste right here in the search bar. Okay. And then it, they'll, they'll buy it for you. It'll be about, you know, 24 hours to 48 hours before you get it back. And then you just, it, they just subtract it from your funds and, you know, you can buy stuff pretty much anywhere. Really? Mm-hmm. Hmm. I, I, <laughs> I might be, uh, Signing up for Zen Market after this, I like that. I think uh, I think other services probably do that. Yeah. And yeah, Dan's right. They uh they don't like saying the brand or the year quite often. Gotcha. You see a lot yeah. of packages just say card. 
Yeah, when I was using JOS, it was kind of like trial by error. Uh, so, I mean, they, they may have been able to do that, but yeah, I have no idea. But now that I actually have somebody that shows me, you know. Mm -hmm. Here's other shops. I've never really looked at these, but they do have some stuff. Gotcha. And then you can also have a thing where you type in what you want and they'll go find it for you within your price range. Oh, wow. That is awesome. And that's pretty much just how I buy them through here. The only other option is the stock eBay, which sometimes you can find um, find people who don't know what they have. Yeah, there's some folks on eBay that there's like three or four uh, guys that I uh, buy from on eBay fairly regularly, uh, but they don't like to work with you on the price as much, especially the guys in the States. Uh, cause I've, I've tried before to get them, Hey, if I buy X amount of cards, can you come down, you know, like 50 cents per card for me? And you know, they, they just won't budge at all. And I can't really, I hate paying $3 for just a, uh, a common, you know, of, of a guy that's a coach now in the minors. So, yeah. I've had it where they have offers on and you s submit them an offer and immediately denied oh really and then you, yeah you go up a bit and still deny it still deny it's like all right screw you like what are you what are you trying to offer are you trying to get here like 39.99 yeah. on a 40 dollar item like yeah what are you after i but they, like they here's uh, a thing of a guy had no idea what he had oh. all right let's go full size on that that's the uh hideo nomo uh Rookie year card game. Yeah, yeah, I it's love. It's still sealed, so the Nomo's in here. Uh huh. And just Japanese baseball game. Oh wow. That's all I had to search, and I found it. Nice. Ooh. Yeah, uh, those. I I really like the uh, the card games because the layout. I just think the layout makes for a great looking backdrop for an autograph, and uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Dan, I just really like the design, so it's pretty cool. So, do you uh, do you have a sp specific cards, uh, Japanese cards that you like to buy? Are you yeah, like if you're going to buy BBM or Calbi or um, BBM is the main company I buy. I'm not yeah. too big on Calbi. I can't afford Epic, so I don't even bother with them. Yeah, because they're the ones with the three hundred dollar boxes with the one card in them. Even though it's really nice, it's just no thanks. Yeah, yeah. The main set I recommend to everybody is uh, let's get the old translate up here. Is the time travel set? Yeah, those are nice. Uh, and you mentioned Charlie Manuel earlier, and he has some really nice uh, time travel cards. And the cool thing about that, uh, Charlie Manuel is really good about doing TTM, and he has a beautiful signature as well. Yeah, I had one that was in black and white. It was a newspaper insert, and he signed it in silver. So it mm -hmm. came out really nice against, you know, the, the black and white. Oh, wow. Like, um, we just sort by highest here. Like, if you just get a box of this, they run about $55. You get guaranteed an autograph. Oh, so you are guaranteed an autograph. You're guaranteed at least one. I've had it where I've gotten two on multiple occasions. Nice. I haven't bought the uh, time travel sets or a uh, time travel box. Uh, my main box that uh, I've fallen in love with the BBM Fusion release. Yeah, uh, Fusion's really nice. Yeah, because it's basically like the update set for the main BBM releases. And uh, yeah, it's it's uh, pretty awesome. And I was, uh, I was going through my cards the other day, and I ended up finding a card of uh, Yoshi that I totally forgot that I had. And I could have gotten it signed uh, when I went and seen him in Texas. And yeah, it's basically what uh, like it's what what Top Sapphire would be, but mm -hmm. yeah. And now that Except he's with, not restricted to a five hundred dollar box. Yeah, and now that he's with the Pirates, he's killing it in the Pirates. So I'm hoping that he uh, stays in America for another year because I believe this is uh, I think he's on a two year deal when he first came to the States. So mm -hmm. hopefully he, uh, he stays. 
So here's yeah. a picture I took for you earlier just to show off my uh, time travel ones in particular. Oh, nice. So, so is that one in the upper, it's in my upper right, is that a cross box? Uh, that's actually from uh, Genesis. That's, yeah. I just had to fit it in there. Nice. That's uh, that's their premium set released every year. Yeah, I, I did Genesis as well. So that's actually uh, the catcher for the Hawks. That's actually a pretty good, valuable card, which I was um, happy to actually get that. But uh -huh. here's what the actual time travel ones look like, and they don't, you don't, they don't look it. But you know, this is not a on card signature. Yeah, uh, that's one of the cool things about their stickers is I've only pulled one uh, autograph out of the pack, and I could have swore it was an on card autograph. And then uh, I looked at the back, and they have like that little uh, indention that they do, kind of like mm -hmm. the, their seal. And then that's when I figured out that it was actually a sticker. But I mean, it, it it's they do it right to where it's a sticker, but you can't tell, and it looks awesome. And the one thing about time travel that I think most people don't know is um, uh, the one below Kai. That's actually from a 2003 uh, Kintetsu box. That's mm -hmm. actually on card. He, I don't know. He somehow had like a six-year career, despite not really being good. Yeah, <laughs> this is basically like a dollar tier autograph. But they're uh, so stingy with their autographs over there that I'm sure that's even worth some money. There you go. But uh, you can actually get two autographs per box. So these four here, they uh, these two and these two all came out of the same box, even though it's guaranteed, you know, one per box. Gotcha. But uh, the thing with time travel is that they also, since they look real good for TDM and you get a lot of foreign players. Yeah, yeah. You're going to get a lot of TTM bait out of one box. So do you do a lot of uh, TTM at all? Uh, yeah, I actually have some pictures right here of some NPB related uh, TTMs, which is a way to, you know, keep collecting even if you can't afford a box. Yeah, yeah. You came prepared. I like it. Is that uh yeah Julio Zaleta? I need to write him. His autograph is gorgeous. I mean, it's a shame he wasn't signing in blue for this one, but I mean, yeah. when it looks like that, I'm happy with that. Yeah, that is a great autograph. It seems that if anyone who played in Japan, no matter what happens when they come back, it seems that they're pretty good at TTM for some reason. Mm -hmm. Like Vogel Song came over and won two World Series, I think, yeah. after he came back with the Giants. Uh, and yeah. Or maybe it was one. I can't remember. I I want to say he was there for at least 2010. But uh, maybe two. I think it was two. But, you know, like he's in their, you know, their little wall of fame over in San Francisco. And uh -huh. normally someone who wouldn't sign. And he signs a TTM. Nice. I'm gonna have Jim to Little. That's yeah. on a time travel card. Still need to write him. Uh, Ralph Bryant took me almost two years to get back. <laughs> I actually know why I got this card back. Um, I actually did help with a certain organization that's about foreign players. Okay. But they kind of didn't keep their promises, and this is kind of their way of saying, oh, sorry. Gotcha. Who's Let's the, just uh, say a lot of these guys might not be signing anymore. Let's put it that way. Gotcha. Who's the uh, Lions card? Uh, that is Chris Gissel or Gissel. Okay, Gissel. That sounds familiar. Either the Royals or the Orioles he played with. I want to say it was the Orioles because I did. I do look him up because back when I got like autographs like these, I would write like a really detailed letter. Yeah. And now I just kind of write like, "Hello, please sign my card. Thank you. Goodbye." Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure half of them aren't even reading it. Uh huh. Um, here's that one that I mentioned earlier, which is, you know, 2011 CPBL. Oh, okay. That's a cool, cool photo. Reels. Yeah. I wish he had a CPBL card, but um, if I recall correctly, he didn't have, like, any anywhere to find his stuff. Uh-huh. Um, here's some more of them. Oh, Miles, that... People probably don't know this, but in the autograph world, that dude is incredibly hard to get. And uh, I've, I've seen that uh, he's made some posts 
on Twitter and social media that do not send him anything to his house. Yeah, that's actually kind of my fault, actually. No, oh, really? <laughs> um, so I sent him this, and it turns out he only signed for two people, me and another guy. The other guy sent BBM cards. Gotcha. I sent this card, but I mentioned his career in Japan, and I said, you know, I don't think it's fair that they're writing you off because, you know, you you were over there for a couple of years. Uh-huh. And then he signed my card for me. Then I had a couple, and I listed it on Sports Collectors, like, oh, I have a success. I had, like, all these messages saying, where'd you send it? Where'd you send it? Where'd you send it? Gotcha. So I, like, gave him their address, and within, like, a week, he's like, please stop sending me stuff. <laughs> so it's pretty funny that he only signed for, like, three people, and we all, you know, mentioned his uh, Japanese career. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they're, right. like, the only people he was just like, all right, yeah, you get my autograph. Gotcha. Yeah, so, uh, and I know he has... There's a, I think it's a BBM card that actually comes in the magazine of his. I think it's him and his wife are pictured on the card. That's a fairly uh, sought after card, I believe. But uh, it, it, if Dave is still watching, he can uh, probably uh, I explain. I've seen that one better. But uh, Shane, um... Dennis, that's another guy that I got to write to. Uh, Bobby Valentine, I need to. Uh, right to him as well. I seen that he is back to signing uh, two per now. Uh, before it was only uh, one one card per. Uh, Be careful with Valentine because he's he's a notorious smudger. Oh really? This is my third attempt, and this is the best one I can get. Gotcha. Do you prep your cards at all? Nah, I mean, everyone else, I'm getting them pretty, you know, pretty good. It's just he's the only one that's no basically just every time you get it, it's smudged. Gotcha. All right. I'll, I'll uh, Shane Dennis, I actually found him on Twitter, and I just asked him for his address because he wasn't listed anywhere. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Nice. I'm going to have to do that once I get some more of his um, card. Do I have a... I think there's another one. Oh, yeah, here's just some other ones that are... Tom Davey. Uh, that guy sounds familiar. I want to say he played in my hometown uh, when they were a Blue Jays affiliate. Uh, maybe. Oh, yeah. Here's some uh ones. George Altman. He's he's an old timer. He played there in the '60s. So you actually got Matt Merton. Yeah. Um. I had to do some internet stalking to to find him. I was going to say because uh, even before he went to Japan, uh, he was a notorious a hole and did oh. not like sign it. Yeah. 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 Uh, he, uh, cause he was drafted by the Red Sox and I lived out in Arizona. I, I still do, but I lived in a different part of Arizona at that time and, uh, was able to, uh, get a Arizona fall league season pass. And that dude just did not like to sign at all. Uh, but that, I want to say that year, the Red Sox prospect, uh, the Red Sox prospects that they sent was pretty stacked. I want to say that was the year they had uh, Pedroia, Ellsbury. There you go. Dave Dave is on the ball. Tom Davey did play for Hagerstown in 1995. Thank you, Dave. And uh, once I minimize the screen, I'll show you I'm wearing my Hagerstown Sun shirt for you today, Dave. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, I, I – yeah, and I've written to uh, Merton uh, a couple times because I need him on my uh, 2008 top set that I'm trying to get completely signed. Uh, I sent to him, I want to say, almost two years ago. So maybe maybe it's time. Uh, uh, I got this one back in 2019. I, actually, yeah, I got that on Christmas Eve 2019, which was a pretty nice, um, oh, really? nice card to have come back. I'm kind of surprised that he's pretty much known to be a jerk, considering how you know he's yeah super born again man. Yeah, I I don't know. Maybe uh maybe I should try again. I don't know. Uh, did you send him? You sent him the American cards, right? Maybe if you send him a Japanese card or something, he'll do something. Uh, I sent him both because uh, I'm, uh, I'm a big fan of the the cross blaze, cross stream, cross mm -hmm. whatever. He had one of those, and I really liked it. So I sent that and one of his uh, 2008 Topps cards. 
Yeah. I sent to him and Randy Messenger at the same time, and Messenger did not get me back. Mm-hmm. And I don't really blame him due to the level of uh, stalking I had to do to find his address. No, really? <laughs> Probably was just like, what the hell, get away from me, you freak. Yeah. Like, yeah. he doesn't know it, but, like, I had to... I found, like, I tried to find his address. He wasn't on Sports Collectors. I found a White Pages account. And then I looked on there, and then I found, like, his wife's Facebook, and I matched up the pictures or something. <laughs> Total creeper mode, and I was just like, please sign my card. And then he was just like, I got nothing back. Thanks for watching, Dan. Uh, See you, Dan. Have, have a good day at school. Have a good day at school. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, he, he is a teacher. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And then, I mean... I don't really have any other stories about any of these guys. I mean, Dennis Sarfate, I mean, he's kind of a funny guy in himself. If you ever yeah, follow his Twitter really account. Dude. He's a really good dude. Uh, I, yeah, I, I met heard him. he's a really nice, nice dude. Yeah, super nice in person. Uh, he's another guy that I've seen in the uh, Arizona Fall League, uh, met his family. And, uh, yeah, they're uh, – yeah, super nice. Who's the uh, – he's kind of in the center, the horizontal card. Uh, Rick Short. Oh, okay. Former Oreo. That's another guy I had to send to through uh, his um, real estate agency. Oh, okay. Real estate seems to be in demand for former ball players. I don't know what that's about. Yeah, there's uh, two guys that I just wrote to today. Uh, former Oreo prospect Leo Daigle. Probably nobody knows who he is, but I had a card of him, and he's in real estate up in uh, – I want to say Mesa, and then there's a former Yankee, Kevin Thompson. He's a uh, out in Texas. I want to say he does something with a law firm. But yeah, it's either housing and law firms are the are the two jobs that uh, people retire to. Or unless you're uh, like Brian Doperak, uh, former Cubs prospect, he is a boat captain now. Boat captain? Yep. He does uh, fishing charters. Whatever works. Yeah, yeah. And then, so, Dave also uh, helped me out here. So, that uh, Miles Nicholas card, it's in uh, Sports Card Magazine from 2015. I remember reading that his wife was super popular in Japan. Apparently, she's some sort of model or something. Yeah. Um, Makes me wonder why she was popular. Yeah, right. I wonder if some card companies were calling her. Maybe, uh, oh yeah maybe yeah. dan would know more about that yeah 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 definitely and then here's just some goofy cards like i don't collect basketball but you can get a box of bbm basketball for 30 bucks and you get four autographs oh really you're guaranteed one but every box i've had has had four or five gotcha. well i mean when i was living in uh south korea after baseball season ended uh, basketball season started. And when I found out they used to make Korean basketball cards mm-hmm. and some of those guys were either still playing or they become, became coaches and announcers. I started buying those, uh, cause the designs, the card design was nice. And, uh, they, uh, it was just something to get signed, you know? Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, I started collecting those and they were pretty fun. Yeah. Like, I mean, this came out of uh, Infinity. If you ever seen that set, that's a multi-sport set. Yep, yep. That's where you can get the bowlers and the ping pong players, and yeah. Yeah, I was trying to get Otani. I ended up getting a judo lady. Yeah. Apparently, she's got like twelve gold medals. So I mean, I'm sure this oh, is wow. something to a judo person. Yeah. And then this I got in a lot where it was a mystery box from Mint, and they gave me a bowling box. Oh really? So I <laughs> just, I just got some bowling, and I mean, nice autograph. You know, she's holding a bowling ball. Yeah. Yeah, that is a pretty cool autograph. I like it. That um it's pretty much all I got is just, you know, use the Zen market and everything to buy your stuff and um it does help to learn some Japanese. You know, when you're dealing dealing with Google Translate, you can know what to type in and you know the grammar rules and everything. Yeah. You don't have to get too in depth, you know, just watch a video on YouTube and you'll be done in five minutes, but <laughs> Yeah. But, uh, Calby, so, you can order the chips. I don't recommend yeah. eating the chips, but you get your cards. 
Nice. Yeah, I've always wanted to uh, – like I, I keep hoping that when I go to the Asian grocery stores here that they'll have the actual – uh, Calvi chips that have the baseball cards, so I can just lose my mind and buy them all. But uh, that, <laughs> that hasn't happened yet. And then, so yeah, Dave, I uh, got the Hagerstown Sun shirt for you, the throwback. Uh, yeah, but so do you? Uh, do you get autographs much in person? Uh, I've never gotten one in person. I've never really gone to the stadium early enough, uh-huh. and I've never been to spring training. That's down in Florida. I'm up here, so never been there. Yeah. I, I think you said you were uh, thinking about going to Philly's Pirates. Yeah, I'm going to get tickets to the Pirates dugout, and I'm going to yell at Yoshi in Japanese until he is sick of hearing me and he signs something out of just, you know, go away, you psychopath. Yeah, right. Uh, he's. I, I think he'll sign. Uh, I don't know what his MLB signing habits are, but – when I got him, he he signed uh, for everyone. So and and he was super nice. And I butchered saying thank you in Japanese, but <laughs> him and the translator, uh, they seemed to be impressed, and they seemed uh, to be really appreciative too. So yeah, I've but, heard that. Like he's just so excited that if anyone knows who he is, yeah, that he's just really happy. And fingers crossed, you know. Uh, that uh, he he signs for you, and he signed a ton for me and my son. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Low key, I'm hoping he gives me a bat too. Oh yeah, that was uh, that. It was when we got the bat. It was perfect timing. So it was there was a bad storm in Texas. We were going to go to a different game. Um, that night we were we were going to drive to uh, uh, Round Rock so we could see Kohi uh, Kohi Arihara or no Ar- Arihara wasn't in AAA it was a uh, there was a Korean pitcher um, for the Rangers and we wanted to try and get his autograph but with the bad storm we were like no we're just going to stay in El Paso so that night the game uh, was suspended and they're like. All right, we'll pick this game up tomorrow afternoon at like, I think the game started around three o'clock in the afternoon. So everybody was all, people were still at work. And even though kids weren't in school yet, I mean, who the hell was going to be able to take them to a baseball game because they were still in school. So there was maybe 50 people in the stadium. And, you know, when, when a bat gets broken, it has that distinct sound. It just splintered, so it wasn't like uh, there was a visual of, you know, the lumber flying out to the field where somebody knew it, but you can kind of hear it. And I heard it. I told my son, I was like, he broke his bat. We need to try and get it. So they, uh, the way they do the suspended game is they'll pick it up, and then they'll announce that, hey, we're going to have a 15, 20-minute break in between the games before we start the next one. So uh, my son went over to the dugout. He, uh, you know, waved Yoshi over because Yoshi was very routine oriented and he was always in the same spot at uh, the same time. Yeah. So here, this is the other guy that we wanted to try and get in Round Rock, but I always butcher his name. So I just say Yang <laughs> usually. Uh, so my son asked him for his bat and Yoshi goes like this, uh, disappears, comes back out and uh, yeah, brought him the bat over and yeah, I was happier than a pig, and you know what, man, it was uh, it was pretty cool. And uh, the only bad thing is he he had two different kind of bats. Uh, the one I got it had his name in English, and it was a Dodgers bat, which is mm-hmm. kind of crazy that he had Dodgers bats already because I want to say he was only with them for like a month, and then he used another one. It was an all black model. I want to say it was maybe Mizuno or Zet. I can't remember. Uh, but that, it has his name in Japanese. Uh, so, yeah, be on be on the lookout for that if you can try and get a bat. He has uh, a couple different uh, bats that he uses, I guess, depending on how mm-hmm. he's playing. So. I was thinking I'll just, you know, if he signs for me, I'll be like, yo, you know that guy you gave a bat to? I yeah. know that guy. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. make another dude today. Come on, hand it over. Yeah, <laughs> right? yeah. And yeah. since I can kind of speak Japanese, because, you know, I'm pretty much out of practice for over a year now, I mean, I'll 
maybe this white dude in the middle of Philadelphia speaking Japanese to him will make him happy. And I'll, you know, I'll name drop my work with Pacific League. Yeah, there you go. Maybe if, uh, maybe make a sign or I see, uh, now that he's gotten uh, really popular, people are printing out pictures of Yoshi. <laughs> yeah, uh, I saw that. And yeah, they're, uh, but yeah, he, he's kind of like a cult hero now and I love it. Uh, it. It's cool to see foreign players coming over uh, that didn't, you know, have the fanfare that uh, Otani did, but these guys are still thriving. So yeah, I'm uh, super excited for him and hope he stays a pirate. I think his problem was, I don't think he can really do the hardcore analytics like the Rays do. Mm-hmm. If you look at his swing with Yokohama and look at him with the Rays, it's it just don't look right. No, and the thing is, people are like, wow, how did the Rays and the Dodgers give up on this guy? And he's doing so good with the Pirates. He gets to play every day with the Pirates. The dude mm-hmm. is a starter. He needs to play every day. Uh, pinching is not that easy, especially when you're facing a pitcher that you have no idea about. So, yeah. Uh, that, and then in um, OKC, they fixed him so now he can catch up to the 100-mile-per-hour fastball. Yeah, and he was doing good in OKC as well. Uh, Oklahoma City, the AAA Dodgers affiliate. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's just that he got off to a slow start. People look at his batting average and they're like, man, this dude's only hitting a buck 18. Well, Mm -hmm. yeah, because, you know, he got to play once a week and, you know, he'd get two at bats or something. People are like, how the Dodgers drop him? It's like, dude, he went down. Yeah, I picked him up for injuries. And now that you got pull holes and you got Turner and you got. Well, he's a shortstop. He's not going to be in the outfit. We got all these people back. It's like you're not going to give him playing time. So now he's in Pittsburgh, where they got nothing to play for. Yeah, yeah. Because so uh, just chill. Yeah, because when he got picked up, uh, the Dodgers picked him up, and then he was with the Dodgers. And then I, I want to say like two or three days later is when they picked up Pujols. So mm-hmm. then I think he got designated, and Pujols was playing first while Bellinger was uh, still hurt. So, but he got to play every day there. And then a lot of people are saying that, you know, Pittsburgh needs to sign him because the DH is coming to the NL, but Mm -hmm. not that bad of a fielder. He can play the field. I mean, he doesn't have to go to, you know, an AL team if the National League doesn't adopt the designated hitter. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm uh, really excited for him. And hopefully he starts getting some uh, tops releases as well. Because, yeah, I think he's been neglected out of everything this year except the newest one they just put out uh i know he's in allen and ginter uh, yeah that's it. he's in um he's in immaculate with panini yeah he he has a lot of panini stuff uh especially last year and mm. chronicles and stuff like that uh yeah but yeah anyway, i was buying in a raise breaks yeah. constantly to get him oh yeah i uh one of the good things well Kind of good, kind of bad. The Rays are uh, their authenticate or their authentics department is uh, they're pr- pretty good at uh, getting back to you. But his stuff was going for insane amounts of money. Uh, Dodger stuff I can't even afford anyway. Mm-hmm. And I'm hoping the Pirates are usually a little bit more affordable. But with the tear that he's going on, his stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, may be a little bit unaffordable because uh i i would at least like to try and get a uh a team issue jersey because the pirates have so many different jerseys that they wear i actually did buy this it's it doesn't really count as a game used baseball but john means struck out satsugo with it mm. so i mean if it's 15 bucks and i get a kick out of it yeah that's still pretty cool though because it's you know connected to that player and if i get him to sign that i can be like yo you you swung and missed at this dude. What's going on with you, bro? <laughs> then he just, you know, throws it back and doesn't sign it. Yeah. Well, John means business. Yeah. That's what <laughs> they say in Baltimore. So, but, uh, it, thank you for coming on. Uh, I know I definitely learned something. I'm going to be using Zen market uh, a little bit more than I can probably stop, uh, bothering Dave as much about, Hey, does this guy have a card or <laughs> hey, hey, can you find this? But uh, yeah, thank thank you uh, mm-hmm. for coming on, and for people that did not get a chance to uh, see earlier, let me uh, show you guys the Pacific League TV uh, YouTube channel again, so you know what to look for. But uh, 
right here. It's a uh, ton of good stuff. Check it out. You'll definitely enjoy it. Click on that uh, that video right there and click like and comment because the league is actually getting back to me about all the likes and comments. Oh, really? Okay. They're actually, they're actually really excited about how much how many views they're getting. Like, I don't think that's their most viewed video, but it's up there. 235 views in five days. Uh, I would be ecstatic about that for my YouTube channel. Uh, that's, you know, uh, dummy math. That's almost uh, 50 views a day. That would be awesome for me. But, uh, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of cool stuff. And it's in English. But, yeah. And we have a lot more coming out. Yeah. We're in the process of writing player profiles. Um, when the awards go out, we'll be covering all the all the award winners in English. When the Sawa War, the MVP, you know, we'll be given. We'll go over everything. We got quirky videos like you know every strikeout a certain pitcher made. Oh really? Oh, so yeah. this is awesome. There you go. Uh, you checked out Dave too, man. That is awesome. We're gonna have a video on Tanaka's first uh, first year back. Yeah. Can't are you, say uh, can't say Yankees, of course, but you know we'll. Uh, are you gonna do kind of like a tribute video, maybe for Dice K? We're not allowed actually because we have to use footage from 2021. Oh, and he didn't catch it. Did. We can't even use farm footage. Um, in our video, we used footage of Alan Busenitz, who was our foreign representative for Rakuten before he went with Sung Chiha or Chia Sung. Uh -huh. And he's only, he's been on the farm all year. We, we can't use the farm footage. Oh. It's just something with the team. So we had to, I mean, Chiha Sung's a better player anyway. So yeah, yeah. And it's kind of a one, two punch. Cause you know, he's from Taiwan. You might not expect that, uh -huh. but I mean, there's just, as I said, you know, when we were talking, it's just, there's so many rules that we have to follow mm -hmm. that we're doing. I think we're doing, you know, the best we can putting out a pretty damn good thing with all the limitations we have. Yeah. Yeah. When, when you uh, put that out there, you know, then it, I, I think it makes the numbers, the, the views even more impressive. So I'll definitely be commenting too. Uh, usually I don't comment on the videos. I'll like and uh, subscribe, but yeah, I'll, uh, I'll start commenting. So I help, help, help you out a little bit. And if you have any requests, just DM me and I'll talk to the people I work with and we'll just, See if we can do it. Awesome, man. I appreciate it. But, uh, yeah, so uh, thanks for coming on. Thanks for everybody yep. uh, in the chat for hanging out with us. And uh, we will see you guys next week. Bye. Have a good one.